we go. Hey guys, it's Pastor Andy with the Beat Church, and we are on day number 12 of Flatten the Fear. And today we're going to be talking about setting the record straight on coronavirus. And I know that there's a lot of news out there. There's all types of uh, just different opinions and thoughts and issues going on externally outside of you. And they're all over the place. You can turn on CNN. You can turn on Fox News. You can turn on MSNBC. Hey, you can turn on The Tonight Show. You can turn on anything, radio, sports, you name it, and you're going to get some thoughts and opinions and views on coronavirus, on the pandemic, on lockdown. You're going to get it from every person that you come into contact with. You can call family or friends and that conversation is going to come up. So with so much information coming in, I thought it would be a great day to set the record straight on coronavirus. Last night we had a community group with our church. We did it over Zoom and we went around the room and we said, what is something that you're looking forward to doing once lockdown, shut down, shelter in place, once this is all over, what's something you're really looking forward to doing? And if you actually listen to each person, kind of the common theme was just making their own choices, being able to do what they want to do. And that could be going out with family, that could be going off for a day by themselves, that could be running off to the beach or just going to a movie, sitting down at a restaurant, getting a cup of coffee, just doing what they choose to do. As Americans, we love choice. We love freedom. And so having that stripped away and having some other people take control has been pretty unsettling and pretty stressful, even depressing for a lot of people. And so that's something that a lot of the comments came back as we are really looking forward to just having our choices back. And so today when we talk about setting the record straight on coronavirus, that's exactly what I want to talk about. I want to talk about a choice that we all get to make every day with or without a lockdown, during a shutdown, or after a shutdown. It is something that we all get to choose, and we get to choose no matter what our circumstances are. Whether we're sick, whether we're healthy, whether we're free, or whether we are in a lockdown or enslaved or in prison, it really doesn't matter. I'm going to tell you a little poem that will kind of give you a preview of what we're going to talk about. And I heard this a long time ago. It was during a business class. And it went like this. One man looked through prison bars. And he saw the mud while another saw the stars. And so you have two guys they're in prison and one man looks out and all he sees is mud. Another man looks out and all he sees is stars. They're in the same place, but they're having completely and totally different experiences. How can that be possible? Well, that can be possible because we all have a choice of what we set our minds on. It's a God-given choice. It's a God-given ability to choose where to put our thoughts, what we're going to think about, how we're going to think about things, the perspective that we're going to take. The ability to choose this is a gift that God's given us, and that is a gift that no one can take away. No circumstance can take away. No person can take away. No situation can take away. It's a gift that God's given us and that we can always have control over. In our lives. And so here's a verse I want to share with you guys. This is out of Romans chapter 8. It says, Those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. The mind of the Spirit is death, but the mind of the or the mind of the flesh is death, but the mind of the Spirit is life and peace. And so what it's telling us is that we have a choice to set our mind on what's natural on the circumstance in front of us, on our own desires, on our own fears, on our own temptations. We have an ability to make that choice and to actually set our mind on that. Or we can choose to set our mind on things of the Spirit, faith, hope, trust, the goodness of God. 
we have a choice of where we want to set our mind, and that's why I have this record player here. Record players were the way to listen to music back in the day, and then it gave way to, I think, eight tracks, and then it gave way to cassette tapes, which gave way to CDs, and then to MP3s, and now you just stream it online. But the way that a record worked, and most of you would probably know this because they're actually becoming popular again, and you can buy record players and records at the store, you can buy them online. My daughter, who's only 19, is listening to records now instead of listening to CDs. She loves to listen to a record when she has a chance. So a record is a round disc, and it's made of vinyl, and it's got grooves in it. And the grooves go round and round and round all the way to the middle. And the way that it works is an arm comes around and the needle drops down onto the grooves and then as it spins and rotates the disc, that needle scrapes along and somehow it converts the different grooves into the sounds that those grooves represent and that comes out of the speakers. Now maybe you're a great engineer or a scientist or an audio technician and you know exactly how that works. I don't know. It is baffling. Incredible one of the great miracles of all time, that a little hard vinyl disc with grooves in it can have a needle scraped around and around and around and beautiful music come out. Totally, completely mind boggling. I have no clue how that works. And I don't even want to try to learn. It just seems too big for me. It's one of those questions I'll get to heaven and say, God, how did that work? It's amazing. But the needle comes down, it sets in the groove, and it spins around and around and around. And you can actually set the needle down on any part of the record that you choose, and that's the song that it will start with. Wherever you set the needle, the music will begin to play. And if you pull that record off and put a different one on and you set the needle, it will begin to play that song. The actual machine just plays whatever it is set to play. That's what it does. Well, our mind works the same way. We choose what we want to set the needle of our mind on, and it will play that over and over and over. If we want to set it on worry, if we want to set it on fear, if we want to set it on anxiety, if we want to set it on the truth that we might get sick, that we might lose our job, that we might die, that our neighbor might get sick, that our family or friend might get sick. That someone we know might lose a job. They might lose their home. That the economy might crash and never recover. That we might be taken over and become a socialist country because we've lost our economy. If we want to put our mind onto any of these ideas and let it continue to play, it will do that. And just like that needle set into that groove as it begins to spin, the record, the sound comes out of it. Well, if we will set our mind on something and it begins to spin, then the way that it works out is that that begins to produce the emotion. It begins to produce the feelings. It begins to produce the depression, the isolation, the anxiety, the worry, the fear. Or if we set our mind on faith, we set our mind on hope, we set our mind on trust, and that's what we choose to set into our mind and put the needle of our mind and the focus of our mind onto that faith, hope, love, goodness of God, trust. We put our mind on that record. Then as our mind begins to think and spin, it will play that emotion into our life. We'll begin to be filled with hope, begin to be filled with joy, begin to be filled with refreshing, begin to be filled with peace. We all have that choice. No one can make it for us. No one can force us to set it on the worst case scenarios, and no one can force us to set it on the best that God has for us. Each individual person gets to make that choice. And I want you to think about this. Every morning that you get up, I want you to, even if you physically walk this through, Go through a process of choosing the record that you're going to set into your mind. What you're going to focus the needle of your thoughts 
on for the day. Get up, walk over maybe to your desk or your, or your dresser, go through the motion of physically choosing out the record of the thoughts that you want to be thinking about that day. Picture yourself just setting it into your mind and saying, Lord, I choose to think upon these things. Like it says in Romans 8, Lord, I choose to set my mind upon the things of the Spirit, upon the goodness of God, upon the divine appointments you may have for me today, upon the joys that you have for me today. God, I choose right now to set my focus upon those things, Lord, and I thank you that as I do that, that just as Romans 8 says, Lord, that I will be filled with life and peace. Life produces. That means that my mind and my heart is going to produce something good, something wonderful is going to come out. I'm going to bring life to those around me. Peace is wholeness and completeness, lacking of nothing. Lord, that I'm going to have your peace in my mind and in my heart. So to actually even go through those motions, walk over, grab a record and say, Lord, I'm putting this in. I'm going to focus my thoughts upon it. I'm going to let that spin in my mind today. So I'll be filled, Lord, with your life and with your peace. And so that I can share that with other people. That's a choice that we all have. So if you feel like life is out of control, you feel like you're not getting enough opportunities to choose things, things are just happening around you and to you, this is an opportunity for you to take control back. Take control back of what matters most. Take control back of the inside. Take control back of your own thoughts. And encourage someone else to do the same. Does that mean that you put your head in the sand and that you don't care about what's going on? doesn't mean that at all because we know that if our mind is in a good place, in a stable place, and in a place where it can think clearly, that we can actually see solutions to problems. But when our mind is in a place of panic, anxiety, worry, fear, depression, we can't see the solution. And so setting your mind upon the good things and allowing God to fill you with his life and peace actually puts you in a position to solve problems, to help people with their opp the opportunities that you see, to see someone that's struggling and to offer a hand to help, to look at your bills and say, I don't know how to pay this, but to actually be thinking clearly on ways to potentially solve that problem. When we're thinking on the good things of God and we're thinking the mind of the Spirit solutions come. Creativity comes because we serve the Creator Himself. And He gives us ideas and thoughts and solutions. And so those are things that God gives us the ability to do. And I challenge you, if you've had a record playing in your mind and your focus has been on the negatives and on the things that could happen and the things that are going wrong and the things that could lead to just desolation, sickness, poverty, brokenness, loneliness, isolation, all the things that our minds spin on. I just challenge you to take that record off, throw it away. Take a record of the goodness of God, mind of the Spirit, put it on and begin to focus on it and let it rule your day. If you do that, not only will you be filled with life and peace, but you will become a giver of life and peace to others. I'm going to read this verse one more time, and then I just want to pray with us. This is Romans 8. It says, Those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. Notice there's a choice. We're setting our mind onto the natural things. But those who live according to the Spirit set, take the arm of that record player, set it. On the things of the spirit and the mind of the flesh is death but the mind of the spirit is life and peace it's a choice that god gives us it's a choice that god gives me individually it's a choice that god gives you individually and if you'll make that choice today and every day you will find that your life is filled with the life of god and the peace of god let's pray father i just pray for everyone that's on this video God, I pray that you will help them to set their mind upon 
the things of the Spirit. Lord, what you're doing in the earth right now, God, and it's not all negativity, and it's not all fear, it's not all disease, it's not all sickness, it's not all virus, it's not all loss of jobs, but God, in the midst of it all, Lord, you are loving people. God, you are bringing families together for family time. Lord, you're giving people rest that desperately needed it. Lord, you are bringing communities together to care for each other, to meet each other's needs. Father, you are doing many great and amazing things in the midst of it all. And I pray that you'd help people to set their minds upon those things, help them to become full of your life and your peace, and help them to become distributors of it to those around them. I thank you for it, Lord. I thank you that you've given us the ability to set our mind on the things of life and peace. I thank you for that ability. I thank you you've given that to everyone listening. And I thank you, God, that when you give us the ability, you also empower us to do it, Lord. Your word says in Philippians 4.13 that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Strengthen us now, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you guys, I love you. Thanks for being on here with me again today. And uh, like, share this video, spread the word, text it out to a friend, call someone, do something to help spread the message that they can choose today to set their mind on the spirit and God will fill them with life and peace. Together we can make a difference. Let's do it.